Since this video is the first video made for a wider audience, we will try to describe everything uh, from the bottom up. We have a Variac attached to a 4 to 1 transformer, stepping that Variac voltage down, going into an alternator, which a motor driven alternator makes a lot of noise. We got styrofoam around it, and on that alternator, we drive. It's a three phase AC alternator. I don't think we can see very much. I got a uh, obstacle course just in there to turn it on. And on that uh, three phase alternator, we have as delta series resonances uh, nine 14 gauge coils, all given capacities. And the phasings on each delta series resonance are placed in a spiral fashion so that every column has elements of phase one, two, and three. This gives a mutual inductance between phasings, which can furthermore be set at two options. It can either be set at 120 degrees or it can be set at 60 degrees by reversing the wiring polarity on the middle segment of coils. We call this a 666 machine because it has six polar areas with all six options set at one sixth of a cycle. Now in further test then on the same principle we have constructed a 266 machine which we employ as the air core method as a primary to impart high voltage on the coil atop it which is a 24 gauge coil. Hence we have 14 gauge versus 23 gauge and I don't know how many miles of wire on that coil it's 2.4 Henry and 140 ohms. The windings themselves are on the primaries estimated to be a quarter of an ohm. Four layers 50 feet of Radio Shack Mega Cable Wire. Now that that's all been gone over here, we have to be looking at our source and the crucial information that we need to see there. When we turn the device on, first thing that we want to look at is our source voltages and the amperages on our delivery lines. Furthermore, subdivided down in the Delta Series resonant or the delta delivery this is not a resonant delivery okay we better go explain that before we turn the device on here also in the beginning we use this nine coil system to procure voltage rise to another component which in that case became that coil that became the interphasal resonance which was given its capacity in series. Then we placed another totally separate identical resonance on top of there and that resonance then picked up a voltage rise from the sending coil of some four to five times the input and that input could be used to power the wireless Tesla coil and that was the first embodiment. And the second embodiment we're using no resonant components. All we are using is these pancake coils hooked up across the voltages present on the three phase delta source. And we find that when we do this that the because the system is not balanced, only two out of three polar interaction areas are being interacted. We will have more current on the top layer, hence more magnetic field. And that is when we put the secondary in there. And by that method, we can deduce the whole range of uh, uh, showing of the changes of currents and voltages in transformation on the system before we hook and apply the Tesla coil which then demands that we uh, disconnect the secondary measurements. So here we're just being concerned primarily with our primary measurements 
I'm going to go in there then and turn the machine on and look at our inputs and our phases and our secondary. Thank you. 
Looks like our top glow vein hooked up. No problem there. Let's shut that off again. Now we can see uh, barely, probably. And, uh, starts coming out of that part there. There's our look at it. Looks like our point discharge right now, real quick. Couldn't find it. No, I never tried it this way. We have to poke it once in time, right? Input and uh, all quits from there. 